Hello everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Kapil and I'm a part of marketing team here at EDB. I'll be your host today for the, today's webinar on how to properly backup your data. This is a pre-recorded webinar by Leticia Averroa, senior database consultant at EDB. And we are joined live by Mansoor Sheikh, sales engineer at EDB. Mansoor will help us with the Q&A session towards the end of the webinar. Before we start with today's session, I just want to go through a few housekeeping uh, items. The presentation is being recorded. We will share the slides and the recording after the session. The lines are currently muted. If you have a question, please feel free to submit it in the Q&A panel. Uh, we will address the questions towards the end of the session. If we do not have enough time to address all the questions, we will follow up afterwards with any attendee whose question was not answered. And now without further ado, let's start with the session. Hello everyone, we will speak about backup and uh, what's important is what is a backup and what's not a backup. And we'll see, I hope, that the answer to both this question is my favorite answer for technical question, it depends because uh, having backups without context about what you're trying to achieve is totally useless. So we'll see how to find the right context, how to define what backup you need and why you need a backup. Actually, I'd say that if you have backups without taking any effort about uh, trying to restore it, your backup are totally useless. It's the thing that we call the shredding your backup because we've seen so many companies having backup but not able to uh, restore it and so losing data. So that's the problem. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Leticia Aru. Don't worry if you can't pronounce my name correctly. I know it's very difficult if you're not uh how if your mother tongue is not uh, uh french or romanian or spanish anyhow i'm a senior database consultant at enterprise db and i'm also a postgres contributor actually i'm also the postgresql europe association treasurer so i'm taking care of money for conference uh, all uh, across europe so we will speak about why we would want a backup. Normally, we want a backup because we, we are trying to avoid data loss. And then we will step into several things that could be appropriate as backups as long as we know how to restore it and as long as we understand the problem and the data loss that can happen with this kind of backup or copy of data. And after that, you'll be, uh, uh, you'll be able to ask a question. But if you have a question that's really important, be, please feel free to, uh, I will try in the middle to uh, let you ask your questions because I think that questions are better in context, just like backups are better in context. So first, Let's try uh, the first thing, data loss. So we will just uh, eradicate the first uh, thing. There is no such thing as zero data loss. So uh, that's a discussion I had with uh, Robert Haas, who's a chief database scientist at EDB. If the death star shows up and does to Earth what it did to Aldaran, practically everybody is going to lose data. And that's fine because I'm pretty sure that we wouldn't care about losing data in that case. What this means is you need to consider if the losing data is really important in each and every scenario where you will risk to lose data. When I say that losing data is always an option and uh, losing zero data is not possible, I mean that in some case, you won't be protected and it's okay. Obviously, you 
won't in 2021 send your data to Mars so that they're protecting against, against Earth exploding. But it will be so costly that your company will be bankrupt because of backups, and that's not what you want. So you need to embrace um, the fact that there is no such thing as zero data loss. I'm sorry about it, but for now, that's not possible with an RDBMS like Postgres. It's uh, what I call a unicorn hunt. And I'm pretty sure, as I said, that should the Earth explode, it wouldn't be a problem to lose your data. So that's not possible. Let's try to uh, solve the problem another way. If there are several questions of context about your project or your applications, that will lead to the choice you will need to have uh, for your copy of your data. The first thing you need to know is, are you able to recreate lost data or lost transactions? Some applications log everything they do, and from this log, they are able to recreate transactions. Some applications get data from flat files and are able to reload them should they lose them. So for some application and pro project, recreating data or transactions is not a problem. Then there's another question I'd like you to ask is how much cost one second, one minute, one hour, one day, one week of data loss? For some companies, losing one week of data is something that they can afford. Some other can't afford to lose something like one hour or one minute or even one second. That will be more difficult to reach, but we can try to reach it. And then there's another question, because having a way to recreate your data or your transactions is great, but how much time can you afford before the, the company is bankrupt? How much time can your application be down without it being a very serious problem for your company? And how much time can you afford to recover on top of uh, having recreated your data and transactions? So I'd like to introduce you with two concepts. It's a very common concept in IT. The first one is RTO, Recovery Time Objective. It is a targeted direction of time and a service level within which a business process must be restored after a disaster or disruption in order to avoid unacceptable consequences associated with a break in business continuity. An RPO, which is a recovery point objective, it is defined by business continuity planning. It is a maximum target period in which data or transactions might be lost from an IT service due to a major incident. All these quotes are from Wikipedia. So it means that there are two things you need to consider. It's how much data are you ready to lose because we've seen that zero data loss is not an option. And uh, even with that thought, you need to think how much downtime can you afford? That's the two constraints that will allow you to find the right solution to not lose too much data. So just before uh, I uh, spoke about an unlikely scenario of the Earth exploding, but there are other scenarios that can lead to data loss. First one is data corruption. Data corruption can someone, uh, sometimes spread through standbys or even to uh, physical backups. Uh, host failing, that's something that happens uh, all the time. Network failing, again, that's not that uncommon. Any massive disaster, fire, earthquake, nuclear bomb, tsunami, tornado, and so on. And thanks to OBH, we know that fire in a data center can happen. 
human destroying data very deliberately or by mistake. Uh, that happens, and uh, I've seen several cases where it happened by mistake. I've never seen a human deliberately destroying data, but I'm pretty sure it can happen too. So for all the scenario, you need to ask yourself, am I ready? How much data am I ready to lose? And how much downtime am I ready to have? Depending on that, you will be able, with uh, your budget, you will be able to say, uh, to design a backup architecture and a restore architecture. Because a backup is totally useless if it's not uh, tested regularly. What a test of a backup says, it says that today I was able to restore that backup. So today that backup was good. I don't know for tomorrow. Let's jump into the first kind of thing that could be uh, called a backup, depending on how much data loss you're ready to lose, uh, you're ready to have. So it's called logical exports. It is an export of data in a format that can or cannot be portable. And then what's important is it's a snapshot of your data at that precise moment. Examples of logical exports are CSV files, SQL files, any flat files, text files, and so on. The Postgres core recommended tool to create logical exports are pgdump to export uh, data from only one database and pgdump all for exporting data from the whole cluster, not only one database. So when should you rely on logical export only? And uh, I, uh, I try to emphasize that all the following condition needs to be fulfilled. You can't just rely on one. So the first one is losing data between your export time and the stopping, the stopping point of the disaster is not a problem. That's really important because there's no way you can recreate the data between that export time and the stopping point. Uh, having done time during the restore and post-restore operations, like vacuum full analyze is not a problem. It means that you know how, how, much, uh, how much time is needed to restore your data and to do the post-restore operations. That's really important because if you don't test, you won't be able to know that time. And so you won't be able to know if your downtime is acceptable or not. And the third point is you solemnly swear you test restore and post restore operations frequently. Uh, a lot of people tell, uh, use the word regularly, I prefer using frequently. And when I say frequently, I mean something like once a week at least. You need to really be sure about what you're doing. And a database can change drastically, it can uh, grow up and can take way more time to restore and so on. So you need to be very careful. And so uh, testing everything weekly seems a good option. So let's try an example. You export all your data every day at 3 a.m. Import time takes two hours because you've tested it and you know. Post-restore operations take one hour to complete. An incident occurs at 3 p.m. How many transactions will be lost? How in when will the database be available again? So that's very simple to calculate. All transactions between 3 a.m. and 3 p.m. will be lost. It means 12 hours of lost transactions. And then the database should be available around 6 p.m. because you will have three hours of downtime, two hours to import, and one hour to do the post-restore operations. Just for your information, depending on the amount of uh, indexes you might have, import time 
can be uh, very, very more important than the export time because during export, we will just export the DDL to recreate the index, but we won't export the data in the index. While during import, of course, you will have uh, to recreate the indexes. That can take a lot of time. About the post transfer operations, uh, as you know, when you load a lot of data, it is advised to use a vacuum full analyze to gather statistics and reduce the bloat. It's really something that I encourage you to do. Of course, your database could be up before, but it will be slower. And I, encourage, and I really encourage you to do the things properly and have three hours of downtime instead of two hours of downtime now, but several hours uh, later when you will try to get rid of the bloat and several of uh, slow down during your transactions because the statistics are not up to date. So what do I need if I want to rely on logical export only? You need to check regularly that data loss stays within acceptable bounds. So let's say you're exporting once a day, it means that you're ready to lose uh, to, to lose at most 24 hours of data. But I'd say that until your backup is tested, you can't be sure because maybe the backup you, you did at 3 a.m. last Monday, uh, last, last morning, is not restorable. It's corrupted. And so it will uh, uh, make the data loss uh, even bigger. The only way to check it is to test. So as I said, uh, and I, I'm sorry, I have to repeat it because I, I go to customers and they never do things like that. So uh, try to regularly import the generated export to check that it's not corrupted. The restore duration is still okay. And the post restore operations duration is still okay. It's not because it was two years ago that it's still true. You need to reevaluate that regularly because your project is changing, your database might be growing, and so on. So you need to reevaluate regularly. How to use PGDump PG Restore? So uh, PGDump is uh, the core tool uh, with Postgres to export. If you want to export a whole database, you will use the connection options, the classical connection options for Postgres client, like uh, dash H for the host, dash P for the port, dash capital U for the user, and then the DB name. So uh, with that, you will export everything in the database. Just keep in mind that uh, some objects like rows and table spaces are not stored on the database uh, level. They're stored on the cluster level. To be able to export table spaces and users, you will need to use the PG dump all uh, utility. There is a special uh, dash G flag that will allow you to export only the global object, table spaces and users. If you want to uh, export uh, with PGDump, there are uh, several formats, but two are important. The first one is plain SQL and is a default. If you do that, so it's with the flag dash capital FP, uh, please name your export file something dot sql so that you remember it's an sql file you won't need pg restore to restore it actually and if you use the custom format which has several advantages like being compressed by default uh, so it's the dash capital fc flag uh, I encourage you to name, uh, to name the file with dot dmp or something that will evocate in you the fact that it's a custom format, it's not SQL. 
Of course, you can export a single table or schema using the dash T or dash N um, option. And you can also export DDL only. Uh, DDL is for, uh, is for data description language. It's a subset of um, the subset of uh, SQL that creates objects, alters them, drops them, and so on. I see there are three uh, questions, but I can't see them. Courtney, can you help? Please? Yes. yes. Um, so the first one is how to restore the PG base backup if we have the PGX logs present in different directory when using the flags X or X, XS or XF? Um, so uh, um, this is, uh, I will answer that later because it's not about logical export. PG-based backup is a physical backup. That's totally different and that's more complex and we'll see why later. Um, and then someone said they're using PG admin four. Do you have the equivalent ways to use those command line to a graphical user interface like PG admin? Yes, I don't like using way tools. Uh, I, uh, loo, uh, I, I use and rely heavily on command line tools uh, for several, um, several reasons. The first one is when I do that on my uh, terminal, I have a, a, a Tmux, which is a terminal uh, multiplexer installed. And there is a great extension to this uh, terminal multiplexer which is called TMX logging, it will capture everything I do, my commands alongside with the result of them, so that everything I do is recorded. It's crucial to me because I, uh, it's not my host I'm working on, it's my customers. So I want to be able to look down at what I did, should I made a mistake or just, to be able to say to the customer exactly what I did. And at two or 3 a.m. in the morning when you're cold, you're really, really happy to have this kind of feature. Should I use a GUI tool? It will be more difficult to record what I'm doing. But yes, it's possible to do it that way. I'd rather use a command line terminal because uh, of traceability. Um, someone else is asking if you can give examples of good practices around how to manage user slash role and backups. Mm, as I said, if you want to rely on logical export only, it's a good practice to regularly do a PG dump all with the dash G flag so that you can export the uh, walls creations and uh, the table space creations and all the alter users and so on. The other two, so if you if you see where the um, number is showing up for Q and A, if you click on that, it will pull up the comments because two of them are about format specifically. So reading them might. Uh, the problem is I can click on the button, but nothing happens. Okay. Um, well, I'll just read the other ones that are coming through um, and we can circle Oh, back. you can send them to the chat because I can see on the chat. Okay. Um, someone else said, do you recommend using logical backups on a really big database, more than one TB of size? It depends. As I said, it depends how much data you're ready to lose and how much downtime you're uh, ready to afford. Of course, Exporting a one terabyte data, uh, database with PGDump will take a lot of time. But if you're okay to have a lot of downtime, should something horrible happen, we're fine. That's uh, your choice. Um, someone wants to know if there's an option to run PGDump just to check for database corruption and not to run an actual export. Yes. Backup. PGDump, the, the great thing with PGDump is that it will read each and every page on Postgres. So it, uh, it will detect corruption. 
I'd rather rely on checks and for database corruption, but still you will need to uh, read all the pages. So that's an, a trick to use pgdump to read all the pages and redirect the output into slash dev slash null if you can't afford the storage. So that it will read everything and should something be corrupted, you will know. Okay, it looks like some of the other questions are not specific to where we are right now in the okay. um, presentation, so we can circle back. Okay, uh, I'll keep going. So about importing, if you used a plain SQL format, just use uh, PSQL uh, F mm -hmm. uh, to uh, give a file and new file. If you uh, use the custom format, you, you need to use PG Restore. PG Restore works in two different ways. The first way is connected, so it will connect to the database. It will create the SQL and play it on your database. The other uh, mode is the not connected mode where you won't give any connection options to PG Restore. And in that case, it will issue on the, uh, it, it will display on the standard output, the SQL recreated from the dump. Of course, if you have everything in a dump, you don't have to restore everything. You can use PG Restore to um, sort what you want or what you don't want. So you can still use the dash T, dash N, or just restore DDL only with dash S and so on. What about standbys? So what is a standby? So first, a standby is also called replica, princess, worker, secondary, or tertiary. Depending on the terminology you rely on, I love the queen princess worker terminology. It's an analogy with a hive. So you have the queen bee whose work is just to work. And then you have the workers that will work for the queen and you have the princesses and the only role on the princesses on the hive is to be ready should the queen uh, be dead. And that's uh, why I love this analogy because you can have a standby that will serve with query. In that case, that's a worker. You can also have a princess, which is to me a standby that does not serve with query. It's there just to be ready to take over the queen should the queen die. And it helps understanding that you can't have both. A good princess can't be a worker at the same time. A good worker can't be a princess at the same time. So what is a princess or a worker? It's another instance totally identical to your queen node, but there are differences. The first one, uh, the, there are two kinds. First one is physical standby. It means that all your binary files from your queen are totally identical to your princess. There is also logical standbys where um, the files might not be the exact same binary ordering, but you will find, you should find the same data when you will query the data. A standby is in recovery forever. It means that it's applying, applying wall files and it can be open for read only queries or not. When should you rely on standby only? And that's very simple. Losing some or all of your data is not a problem. So let's say that uh, we have a former employee that connects to the database and drops it because uh, maybe they're very angry or whatever or a hacker enters your system and drops the database, or the DBA removes the PG data directory on the primary by mistake while trying to rebuild the secondary that's corrupted. So you don't have the secondary because it's corrupted and the primary is removed. You might say that a DBA won't be able to do that. Well, it happens, believe me. So these cases shows that if you rely 
on the standby only as a backup system, it's okay, but only if you're ready to lose some or all of your data should one of these scenarios happen. Because the data you will use if someone drops the database is everything. There is no copy. Because everything you do on the primary is replicated to the secondary. And most of the time, there is no, not enough time to prevent it going to the secondary. So this scenario are really real scenarios that can really happen and the probability is not so low. So I really encourage you to think over if you think that you can lose all your data, you can go without uh, other backups than your standby. Maybe for some application, being up and having less downtime is more important than losing data. It can happen. For those corner use cases, using the standby is okay. As I say, the correct answer of the, the, the to what kind of backup do I need is it depends. How to set up a standby? So here are the high level steps. You need to make the queen node ready for replication. There are some parameters to set. And in particular, I uh, really encourage you to uh, um, put archiving uh, to on. Then you need to take a physical backup of the node. Uh, and you will restore the physical backup on the princess worker node. Then you will change some settings to the princess worker uh, so that uh, this node knows that it's not a queen. Then you will start the princess worker node in princess worker mode. And then you will check that the replication is working fine. So these are really high level steps. But uh, it's not that complicated. It's, uh, it might be a little long if you're not used to it, but uh, with uh, some practice, it, it will go very easily. Uh, do we have questions about standbys? One minute, let me pull out what came through. Um, let's see. There's a lot of questions about using when to use PG restore versus PG dump in terms of pros and cons. That was one question. One was about what's faster. Um, uh um I, again what's faster it depends you need to test to be sure it depends on your hardware it depends on the kind of the database you have the kind of workload you have it, i can't say it that uh, so easily it will depend on your database um someone wanted to know how do you check the status of the queen to princess replicas it was the last bullet point you have a few pg stat replication you just need to query it uh i will keep going because i haven't seen time but uh i need to keep going if i want to go to the end of the presentation so about walls and uh, recovery so uh walls are files where uh, and we'll see how they work Let's say we have a user sending a DML query, DML for data modification language, it's a bread delete or insert, to an instance, an instance being a memory with process. Here we have data files. The first thing the instance will do is take the data from the data file into the memory. Everything going on with an RDMS is going on on memory for performance reasons. Then we will change the data according to what was asked. And just be, uh, in that case, the memory is called dirty. So if you heard, uh, hear someone talking about dirty buffer, it just means that the data you have in memory is different from the data you have in the data file. And 
then the user sends a commit or it's in auto commit mode, whatever. Just before answering the user, we will store this modification in the wall file. The wall file is a sequential file. So it's easy to read into it uh, and it's fast. And then we will say to the user, we're fine. Everything is fine, don't worry, we won't lose your data. And from time to time, there is an operation called a checkpoint where we will take data from the memory into the data files. And then the memory is not dirty anymore. So, but what happens if there is a crash before we were able to take the data from the memory into the data file? So we have this situation. We have the wall file here with two red squares that are different from the data files we have here. First thing the uh, Postgres will do when it will start, it will look at the last checkpoint. And then it will lose, uh, look at operation happening after that last uh, checkpoint in the wall file. And then it will take the data into memory and issue a checkpoint to secure the data into the data file. And after that, the database uh, will be open again and you'll be able to use it again. That's how we ensure that we don't lose your data while still having good performance. That one is an important one because uh, now we use VM or um, VM uh, is uh, most com the most common thing. And with VM, we have something called VM snapshot. And also on the storage uh, point of view, we have things called storage snapshot. So what it is? It's a set of five files at one point in time. Offline snapshots are very fine. It means that you stop the database, then you do the snapshot you want, and then you start the database. If you do that, you will have a set, uh, you, you won't have any problem with your set of files. The problem nowadays is that it's really difficult to uh, stop the database. Most of the time, people want the database to be running at all time, so that we need to do online snapshots. And the problem here is that it operates on a layer below the database, because you see you have the VM, the storage, the OS, and then the database. Uh, and what you need to understand is from the file system point of view, an RDBMS uh, have most likely inconsistent files on disk. So you need to remember to put your database in backup mode to not rely on luck for your recovery uh, and to archive all the wall files between the beginning of your snapshot and the end of your snapshot. That's really important. Or else you won't be able to recover, but you'll see it because you will test your backup. So when to rely on VM storage snapshot, snapshot only? All the following conditions need to be fulfilled. Again, I can't stress it enough. You can't rely on only one or two of these. You need everything. So the first thing is you really understand what you're doing. And it means that you really understand under the hood how Postgres is working. You don't want another option because it can't satisfy the downtime, uh, the downtime, downtime objective, or because it won't satisfy another constraint, whatever. You still in this trial, you test the restore and recovery operations frequently, and you'll also archive the world files between the beginning of the snapshot and now. I say now because most of the time when you want a, a VM or storage snapshot, you want to reduce the data loss. So in order to reduce the data loss, it means you will have to apply the wall files between the beginning of the snapshot and the last, most recent, uh, the most recent operation before the incident. So how to perform restorable VM storage snapshot? The first way to do that is to take the snapshot offline, as I 
as I know, it, most of the time it's not an option. Uh, but stopping the database, taking the snapshot is a perfectly fine option. If you can't stop the database, then you need to take the snapshot online. To do that, you need, you need to tell the database that you will be doing a snapshot. And so in order to uh, reduce uh, the risk of corruption of your backup, you will be need to put your database in backup mode. You will do that with PG start backup, a label with the name of your backup, and the two false boolean beforehand. And then you will use the PG stop backup to put your database out of backup mode with the uh, options false and true. I let you go to the Postgres documentation to understand these two booleans, but they are really important. And don't forget to uh, also take the backup labels and the backup label and the table space map files that you will find on the, P, um, uh, on the PG data directory. Uh, just for your information, depending on your workload, when the database in, is in backup mode, you might generate more wall files. It's not guaranteed, but it can happen because you will enter a full page might write uh, all the time so that it can be a problem for you. But don't you try to uh, back up your uh, database by doing a VM or storage snapshot without entering the backup mode because you will end up most likely and uh, more likely if you have a busy database with something you won't be able to restore. Physical backups. A physical backup is a set of consistent or inconsistent files that will allow recreating the cluster from nothing. You can have offline physical backups, so it's the same as offline uh, VM or storage snapshot. You just stop the database and then you can copy over all your PG data directory and you'll be fine. Um, but uh, again, stopping the database to do a backup is most of the time not an option. So you will uh, most of the time rely on online physical backups. There are several tools to have physical backups. PG-based backup is one of them. And we, uh, I had a question about this one. And uh, you have Barman, you have PG Backquest, you have others. Um, the problem with PG-based backup is that it's Totally, it was totally designed for backup. It was not designed for restore. So it's lacking a lot of options like uh, what backups have been taken? Is my backup corrupted? Well, now there is a verified backup uh, tool, but you still don't have a catalog, of, a catalog of backup. And how can I restore the backup? PG-based backup won't restore it for you. Just remember that creating a backup that the database can recover from is complex. Don't use your own scripts. That's very important because I've seen uh, people creating bash script on top of PG-based backup just to, um, uh, to have a backup catalog, for example. This is a bad thing because I, I assure you, backupping an online that our DBMS is something very complex and there are so many ways this could go wrong that I can't advise you to do that in production. Please rely on existing tools. When to rely on physical backup only? So again, all the following conditions need to be fulfilled. You can afford the additional backup storage because it will take some sites normally twice the size, uh, you, you will need the same size as your uh, primary uh, PG data directory. You can afford the restore and recovery time and you will be able to know that only should you test your backup. You solemnly swear you will test the restore and recovery operations frequently. You'll also archive all of the wall files between the earliest backup I mean the beginning of the earliest backup and now 
a backup without wall files is totally useless because it's made of inconsistent file and you won't be able to reach a checkpoint. So let's compare. We have logical exports, which are portable with a smaller granularity, but slow to restore and with possibly a huge data loss. Standbys, quickly available. It's really simple to uh, transform a princess into a queen, but it's on whole cluster only, and there is a huge data loss possi uh, possibility. You need to take that into account. VMS storage snapshots, quickly available and uh, reduced data loss. That's great, but it's for the whole cluster only. There is no rule management in it, so you will need to do it yourself. You still need to recover. So even though uh, restoring a snapshot is uh, faster, you will need to apply all the wall files, and a lot of things can go very wrong, believe me. And about physical backups, there are safe tools available. The data loss is reduced, but it's not zero, as I said first. That's not possible. And uh, uh, but the whole it's uh, it will work on the whole cluster only, and you still need to recover. Thanks to Leticia for the presentation. Uh, we have Mansoor with us uh, for the Q and A session. If uh, anybody has any questions, please ask them in the Q and A panel. We already have received a few questions. Let's get started with that. Uh, hi, Mansoor. Hi, Kapil. Hi. So first question uh, we have here is how to uh, make backup fast using PG Backrest. Yeah, PG Backrest is one of the popular tool to take the backup and we can take uh, the backup very fast uh, by using the parameter that is a start is equal, uh, start underscore fast is equal to Y. And this will force checkpoint to start up backup quickly. Next question is, can we do retention policy more than 30 days? Yeah, obviously we can do retention policy more than 30 days. Uh, uh, one full backup uh, after the after 30 days will be preserved. Okay, the next question is, what is wall archive compression and which tool is there in ADB? Wall archive compression, as uh, we uh, discuss, that is a wall file, and to compress, we can do it uh, use with the help of Berman tool. And Berman is very popular tool. EDB also provides support for the Berman. And for the details of Berman, just go to the Enterprise DB portal. You will get a very good demo uh, as well as uh, the documentation on Berman. Okay, uh, is there catalog management in EDB backup tools? Yes, uh, the Berman provides uh, the catalog management. Uh, when you schedule the multiple uh, backups, when you take the backup of multiple database servers and you, you have to register the multiple database servers and you can find out the detailed information about each servers in the catalog. So yes, it is possible. Okay, can we uh, take a complete database backup using PG dump and restore only a single table from it? Yes, yes, there are a lot of options are there. So you can take uh, the schema, you can, you can take the backup of a schema and restore, restore the particular object. Similarly, when you take the complete backup of your database and you want to restore only one of the table, then you have hyphen T. Uh, that will restore only specified table. So hyphen T uh, with the help of PG underscore restore command, we can uh, take the selected object. Okay. Next question is PG dump command can be run after stopping the data, uh, stopping the DB as well. Please confirm. No, no, we can't do take, we can't take the logical uh, backup when you stop the database because uh, you can see the logical object when the instances are running. So your database should be uh, run uh, to take the logical backup. If you want to take the backup uh, when you shut down, so that is a PG-based backup. PG-based backup method is there 
where you can take the file level backup either running or either shutting down but after shutting down the instance and you want to take the logical backup that is pgdom this is not possible okay uh, is is baman support uh, is there baman support for file level uh, incremental backup file level incremental backup yes it is supported by the baman okay how uh, can we restore specified object during restore yes as i said uh, we can select specified object from the schema we can select specified object from the database so there are the options are there uh, like hyphen t hyphen n hyphen small n uh, hyphen uh, hyphen small s so there are the multiple options just to go on a command line and you can say pg underscore restore hyphen hyphen health you will get multiple options uh, for doing this okay uh, someone is asking where can i get the powerpoint presentation we will share the point uh, the ppt uh, after uh, the webinar uh, with you uh, next question we have is if you have variety of data such as images text files then is logical data backup uh, preferable yes always logical data backup is prefer the, that's why this uh, uh, entire presentation was there so it depends uh, for example you want to take compressed backup you can use hyphen c option if you want to take full backup text backup so you can so based on the use cases based on your requirement these type of variety of search data backups are useful okay we have one last question uh, can you please suggest parameters for pg base backup uh, required to set mm, okay so see pg base backup uh, when you take you want to, to, to take the pg base backup yes there are some um, prerequisites are there and one of the prerequisite that just open the postgresql.com file and there you have to configure the parameter so uh, let's say that wall level that is one of the parameter then archive command is there the archive command you have to specify where your archive file will go because database should be in archive mode that's why you have to keep the data, uh, database in archive mode so archive mode should be on then we have some parameter that is max wall sender is required to set as well as wall keep segments so so these are the important parameters are there so i would suggest again uh, there are very good documentation for burman pg backrest is there and some of the documentation on the backups we have the demos are there so just go on enterprise db.com uh, side and there you will find the demo and documentation for bg backrest uh, burman tool is there and yes obviously uh, if you want to ask me that whether the pg based backup yes pg based backup is useful, useful for physical level backup and some of the parameters as, as i have explained about archive command archive mode wall level should be replica and the max wall sender and wall keep segments so these are the important parameters that would be helpful uh, when you want to take the pg based backup thank you mansoor uh, that looks like all the questions that we have uh, for the day uh, thank you everyone for joining us for the webinar we will be sharing the recording along with the slides with you as soon as possible i hope you have a great rest of your day thank you thank you